Throughout history, mankind has always been fascinated by space. With the development of new technology, humans have traveled further into space than anyone predicted was possible just a hundred years ago. In the 1950s and 60s, enormous progress was made in space exploration. It reached its peak when Neil Armstrong became the first human to walk on the moon on July the 20th, 1969. But this progress wasn't made just because of developments in technology, as physicist Anu Oja explains. Human space exploration started in 1961. That was half a century ago, with Yuri Gagarin being the first human being to orbit the Earth. Now, when we look back in time, the original reason for going into space was this political battle, this struggle between the Soviet Union, Russia nowadays we think of it, and the United States, communism against capitalism. And that's why humans went to the moon. Through the 1970s and 80s, the United States and Russia continued to dominate space exploration. But in the past 20 years, things have started to change. It's true to say that in the early years of space exploration, it was individual countries competing against each other. We had the United States against the Soviet Union. But in the last 20 years, we're seeing more and more international cooperation. And the greatest example of this cooperation is the International Space Station, which has been in orbit since the late 1990s. The International Space Station is a collaboration between the Russians, the Americans, the Europeans, the Japanese, the Brazilians and many other countries. And while countries like the United States are reducing their investment in space, other countries are just starting to get involved. When it comes down to space exploration, space science, space technology, a lot of people have this idea that it's just NASA, or it's just the European Space Agency, or it's just the Russians. What we found in the last 10 to 15 years is some of the countries that are emerging financially are also starting to play a bigger and bigger role in space. Today, many countries from China to France can launch rockets. The Indian government has a very active space program. In 2017, the Indian Space Research Organization set a world record when they launched 104 satellites with a single rocket. In the future, it could become increasingly difficult for many countries to justify spending on space programs. When people ask the question, why do we spend all our money on space science and space technology? What difference does it make to our everyday lives? To understand why space programs are so necessary, we need to ask ourselves what would happen if we didn't have any of this space technology. The best way of trying to understand just how much we get from space science and space satellites is to imagine what would happen right now in the 21st century if we switched off all the satellites orbiting the Earth, what effect would it have on our lives? No GPS systems, no sat-navs in cars, global telecommunications, getting signals, getting news, getting sports coverage, global communications, all of it would completely stop within one or two days. And the way we live our lives is so dependent on this that life would get pretty uncomfortable, even in the space of just a week. We need satellites to maintain the way we live our lives in this century. Space technology also plays a vital role in monitoring the weather and environmental change. 
Every year, thousands of lives are saved by the information coming from weather satellites. And if we want to understand what humans are doing to the environment, there are lots of concerns about climate change. Is climate change real? Yes. How much of it is being caused by humans? That's what we're still not sure about. But in the last 10 years, we've got a network of satellites that are what we call Earth observers. They're looking down at the planet. They're helping us understand the planet better. Increasingly, traveling into space has less to do with human exploration and much more to do with big business. Unmanned spacecraft are being used to launch commercial satellites and for space enthusiasts like Anu, this is a concern. In my opinion, there is a difference between space science and space applications from satellites and human space exploration. Humans have been into space since 1961, but only 500 people have gone in the last half century. And of those 500 people, only 24 went to another world. Those were the Apollo astronauts that went to the moon between 1968 and 1972. And 12 of them walked on the moon. When we think of how long ago that was, there is a lot of concern about why do we do human spaceflight? Why do we explore? Now, in my mind, being an explorer, wanting to know what's over the horizon is part of what it is to be human. When I was a child growing up, it was human space exploration that made me want to be a physicist, then a scientist, and that is what led me to the job I have now. But for the last 40 years, we've just been going around the Earth. What's next for the people who still dream that one day they will be able to see the Earth from space? For the people who hope that one day they might be able to set foot on the moon? Or even visit another planet? For many years, some people have believed that the age of mass space tourism is on the horizon. But over 15 years since the world's first orbital space tourist, businessman Dennis Tito, paid around $20 million to spend six days on the International Space Station, the development of this industry has been slower than predicted. And Anu is a realist about the future. When it comes down to space tourism, the idea of thousands of people taking holidays in space will be as much a fantasy in 50 years' time as it is today. The challenges of human space exploration and staying in space are still extreme. Today, the competition to be the first operational space tourism company is fierce. And organisations run by billionaire businessmen are leading the way. Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic, Elon Musk's SpaceX, and Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin are all developing spacecraft and promising trips for private citizens in the next few years. While Virgin have already built a spaceport in the desert of New Mexico in the USA, they have also experienced many problems and setbacks with their spacecraft. But now, SpaceX have announced that they will launch two private citizens on a trip around the moon in 2018. They're not revealing how much this trip will cost, but they say their passengers have paid a substantial deposit. And experts guess the ticket is likely to cost over $100 million. 
There will be very few people who will ever be able to afford to experience space tourism and be able to say that they are an astronaut. For most people, the experience will never be worth the enormous cost and the very real risks. There is a very good reason why, since 1961, only 500 people out of the billions of people of life have ever been into space. And it's to do with the enormous amounts of energy we need and the enormous limits of science and engineering that we have to try and face. Now, rocket science and rocket engineering, it's safe. But even though 500 people have been into space, 18 have died in the process. Human spaceflight is not 100% safe. It's a risky business. And so whenever human beings want to explore and they want to go further, there is always a risk factor. I think for the foreseeable future, human spaceflight is going to be about going around the Earth, is going to be about doing experiments that we can't do on Earth, and it's going to have some fantastic discoveries that are made. But for me, that is not what space exploration is. While space tourism is an idea that I think would be fantastic and I would love to experience, I don't think we're going to see a time in the next century when we have thousands and thousands of tourists taking holidays in space. I think that's more science fiction than science fact.